So last night, Alyssa and I had had enough. We were tired, uh, it's been a long day. Seems like, and I don't know why this happens and I probably could figure it out if I looked at patterns. <laughs> Phone calls and emails and chores and things seem like we can't ever get out here first thing in the morning unless you just don't pick the phone up or don't look at your computer. That solves that. So last night we were pretty tired because for some reason, another pattern, problems seem to always develop around three o'clock in the afternoon. Maybe that's because most people get tired by three o'clock in the afternoon. And it's the heat of the day and problem solving becomes more difficult, tiredness sets in. But we spent a little time, had some dinner, kind of nourished up, talked about it a little while. I tried a few things and we've come up with a plan for how to solve the out of plumb on our north wall. We've been yammering about this gap. You can't see it very well because it's in the shadow right there. And it turns out off camera last night, we spent a lot of time just trying to work through this. We ran a plumb bob from this corner down and it turns out that per block as you go up, this wall is coming out of plumb about an eighth of an inch per block. Funny, that's exactly that gap. I'll try to keep this brief, but basically light form their installation technique is to have a common seam, floor to ceiling. It just so happens that our building is in a two inch increment, which these blocks are in a two inch increment. So if our wall back here were plumb, that gap would not exist and these blocks would fit perfectly. Most buildings are not in two inch increments. We just happen to have one and that's why we thought their blocks would fit perfectly and they would, except our back wall is not level. So after a good amount of time, we started checking things and I said, there's no way this gap is going to close unless this corner comes up to help close that gap. That's just how squares work. That would be bad because this wall is, our north wall is dead level. In fact, in this corner, both walls are plumb and our east wall is dead level or darn, darn close. We think it might be about an eighth of an inch uh, high right where that step down is. But look, that block fits perfectly, right? And this block has fit almost perfectly. That means that these two walls are very happy walls. So if we raise this corner, that's gonna jack up this wall and the east wall. What a mess. This is a situation where if you do it wrong, you'll create a tremendous amount of work for yourselves on top of what you already have. There's a theory, you can either shim two walls or you can cut one wall. We talked about this for quite a while and we brought the laser level out to, to confirm what we kind of suspected. And it turns out that our west wall from the step down to the corner is one half inch high. This corner, if you thought about it, it seems like it's low. And it turns out this corner's correct. So is our east wall. For some reason, somehow, this west wall is a half an inch high. So we screwed up. And it's gotta be the forms because I know that we, we did very, we tried very hard to float those forms to level, being the most critical thing. So what's happening, the uh, wall is actually rising to meet that half an inch because we set the height on our step down to be 16 inches because that's the height of the ICF block. The conclusion we've come to after trying to push and heave and do a bunch of other stuff on this wall, it is the least of all evils to finish stacking the walls and then we're going to make a relief cut in the third row that will be a wedge. That will actually cause this wall to drop and that gap to close. The net effect though, is that from the step down uh, to the southerly side, that wall is gonna be a half an inch too tall. That's easy to fix. All we have to do is run our laser on the top of the wall and trim that wall to the correct height. Cutting foam is very easy. Shimming walls is very time consuming. I'm not sure if, I, I didn't even know, this hall hasn't even sunk in yet. I'm not even sure we could have identified this early on with our lack of experience. If we would have lasered our footings, <clears throat> we would have known. If we would have double checked those before we started building on them, we would have known this was a problem. And it didn't become obvious until now. And if it would have been a quarter of an inch, I think we probably could have got away with it. But being one half inch high 
has created a substantial problem with the wall. And the reality of it is that half an inch is forcing our north wall to be out of plumb. That's a bigger problem because that gap represents the uh, amount of out of plumb our rear wall is. So we're going to make a strong attempt to fix that today. I'm actually gonna jump on the phone with Lightform and confirm all these details with them, make sure that they're aware of our plan and strategy, see if they see any holes in our plan. Uh, and then hopefully Alyssa will be out here and we can get to work. Uh, for what it's worth, really quick, the reason shimming this up, I just restate this, shimming this up would mean we have to shim this wall and this wall. That would be an absolute nightmare. We already have our drain tile and rock and fabric behind these two blocks. There's rock up about this high you're not going to get to that block on the outside. It would be an absolute nightmare to have to shim these walls. So that's another reason it's not gonna happen. Well, it looks like Casey is actually unavailable at the moment. So let's jump to work here. Um, something I wanna test, this wall is actually out of plumb, uh, but it's okay, we need to adjust it. So that's why we put these turnbuckles here on the upper side of this brace. So the turnbuckle there, and we need a, a ratchet driver with an extension to turn that. And the net effect is we'll be pushing this wall out at the top. So we need to get that done. I wanna make sure that this wall is fairly true before we start attaching more bracing. And then it's time to keep working around the corner. So we need to get the plating and fascia on here. I haven't decided what we're gonna do with the buttress yet, it's not clear. And then we'll keep working our way around the corner. And then that should allow us to stack our sixth row and finish rows five and six on this side. Well, the fit. Yeah. So we're only going to the sixth row on the buttress, right? So just one more row with the T block and then we're done with the buttress. For the sledgehammer for 20 minutes now and I don't know about you guys but sometimes when you're looking for something it suddenly turns into a very um, spontaneous cleaning spree it's either in bed because Alyssa kept it in her pocket or something but I think Alyssa may subconsciously be hiding tools now to keep us from getting this house built I'm not really sure apparently cleaning happened 
because I finally, after, you know, two weeks, picked up a bunch of rock that was all through here that you're tripping on every time. So I'm totally guilty of blaming Alyssa. It was my fault. I left the sledgehammer behind the building last night. Ready? Yep. Good catch. So this was my attempt last night. Stake this, turnbuckle, tried to push this wall to close that gap, but it's just too rigid. It's very rigid right here because all these blocks are interlocked and you know what? The wall's doing what it's supposed to do. It's just doing it at a slight angle. So here's hoping somewhere in there we can make a relief cut and drop that wall down. In the meantime, I found a whole bunch of stuff up here that I must have just gave up on last night. <laughs> oh geez. Oh, there's the sledge. Gloves. Tools. I think before we have children, we should definitely not have high stress situations because Apparently, when I'm in high stress, I just leave stuff wherever I put it. <laughs> I'd be like, where's, where's Johnny? All right. Last blocky block on the buddy buttress. Somehow, we gotta get scaffold up there. That's gonna be hard to do, because these boards, we oiled them, and they were already big boards, so they're pretty heavy. Jesse's working on getting our scaffolding up. That's pretty exciting. So I think next I can work on putting the zonts on this wall, yeah. right? Yeah, let's and do it all at once. Let's do zonts, bracing. Okay, well we, and, we can only work on one section of wall at a time. Unless I go ahead of you with zonts. Oh, I mean like the, the in-wall bracing and the, right. and yep, the yep, yep. rebar. That can be done all at once. Okay. We actually decided we're gonna go ahead and put the last two rows on, the east wall and then we're just gonna focus on bracing i don't know about you guys but if you try to do too much at once or too much as you go it starts to get overwhelming so sometimes it is best to just pick one task and do it all the way around the building this is really funny and worth mentioning we're now referring to this as a building that's really exciting that's before we were calling it the home site and now it's graduated to building it's moved its tassel yeah. But it's not a house yet. We should update our Facebook status. Totally. To like building. It's feeling building. How are you feeling today, Jesse? Building! <laughs> I feel like a building! Let's flip it. Hey, guess what? Hmm. I found shade. Holy cow. There's a windstorm for you. It feels good. And she stands. Give your worst wind. We have Zont and Zuckle bracing. Too tall to cut, huh? Uh, I gotta put my big boy pants on. Here we 
here is the last piece of the sixth course prep. <laughs> Cool. Um, I think I can stay up here and add the zonts to this wall. Okay. Thoughts? I'm already up here. Here's your zont assembly kit. Cool. Wow. Time lapse. Of... Ready? Yep. It's gonna have to come towards me about six inches. It's, I'll work on it. It's stuck in the middle. I need to lift it. Um, so we didn't have to flip then, right? Nope. I thought this end, this is the end of pushing down. Yeah. I bet you thought we were done with steaks. I kind of did. I kind of thought we could get rid of these. Not get rid of them, but the door concrete guy. And nope. Oof, starting on a rock. Ouch. Is that a rock? What isn't a rock? Wow, look at the soil bounce. End of game. That's pretty good. For tonight. Um, I should probably stake this one. I think it'll be fine. These okay. two are staked. Okay. Staking it tonight's not gonna help. Part of me wishes we would have put at least a brace or two on here but we ran out of screws. We have screws, but I don't know why everybody gotta be dumb and make T20, T25, T30. Why can't they just flip and make one size a bit? So I think we're gonna try to return those screws in the morning and get T20 because it's absolutely obnoxious trying to change bits all the yeah, time. Yeah, totally, this job's hard enough. All right. So I think on that note, yeah. shower, dinner, stretch, sleep. But first, good job. We hammered out, and by we I mean mostly Alyssa, the sixth row all the way around. Yeah, and we I, are closing I thought it would in. be reasonable to finish this side. You can see now why I said no way. We we could do it. Oof. But something would what be sacrificed. What a push, yeah. So. so we got bracing on all the way around to where we're sitting. And so tomorrow we gotta plate this concrete down here, which is no small task clear a lot of this stuff out because it's going to be tighter than a insert random tight <laughs> analogy and then hopefully we'll actually get our scaffold up over there and then it's time to put on the last two rows. Think we get out tomorrow? I think we get out tomorrow. I think so. 
I'm not really sure how fun putting 5 8 rebar that's bent is going to be over all this wild bracing that's like flying in the sky. I think for some stuff we can feed it through the corners. So set up the tall ladder and just like feed it throughout the Very outside, good outside idea. Of the house. All right. It's been fun, y'all. Hasta mañana.